It's time to talk about the loud and shiny section of the orchestra. Yes, it's the brass section. As with the woodwinds, the brass family depends upon the lips to start the sound. But unlike the woodwind family, all of the brass mouthpieces are basically the same in concept. They just come in a lot of different sizes depending on the instrument. Let's start with the most recognizable brass instrument, the trumpet, which is usually the highest brass instrument heard in the orchestra. You can hear that the trumpet has a very bright and piercing timbre. It's very majestic. Quite often you'll hear the trumpets playing music that is regal or royal sounding. That's quite a contrast from the first selection we listened to, and listening to both shows the versatility of the trumpet. You may have noticed that the trumpet has only three valves. So how in the world do they play all of those notes? Well, all brass players have to know how to tighten their lips, alter their tongue position, increase or decrease their airflow to increase those three or four valves, or the slide, as in the case of the trombone, into many possibilities of notes. I think it's pretty awesome. Here's another question. Have you ever heard a trumpet that sounds like this? How in the world is the trumpet making that funky sound? Well, the player is using special tongue effects and something called a mute which is basically a plug you put in the bell of the trumpet. That's a major obstruction to the airflow and it makes a huge difference in the sound. There are a lot of different types of mutes to get a lot of interesting sounds and they're not just limited to trumpets. What if I told you that there's a brass instrument called a piccolo trumpet? What would you predict it looks and sounds like? Well, based on what we learned in the woodwind section, you have probably guessed that it's smaller than the trumpet and plays higher notes. And you would be correct. Let's listen to it and see how it compares. As with the piccolo in the woodwind section, you can see how this basically extends the higher end of the trumpet's range. Now let's take a look at this picture. Can you tell what this is? You might think it's another kind of trumpet, but you would be wrong. What is it? It's a cornet. You might think this is a trumpet if you see it by itself, but when you put it up next to the trumpet, you can see it's more compact and has more twists and turns. What is less obvious is the shaping of the bore. The cornet has a conical bore, which means that it gets gradually larger from the mouthpiece to the bell. The trumpet has a cylindrical or straight bore, which means that it stays the same size until it reaches the bell. The result is a timbre that is more mellow than the trumpet. As you listen to these music clips, are you surprised at how mellow these brass instruments can sound? 
they can play very bright and loud and bombastic, like the fanfare we listen to, but they're also capable of very sweet, mellow tones. In fact, it's a measure of the skill of the performer that they can produce such mellow tones. Another brass instrument that's known for being mellow is the flugelhorn. Yes, there is such a thing. This is bigger than the trumpet and the cornet, so what do you think the sound will be like? beautiful. And as the instruments get larger, the low tones on the end start to get warmer and fuzzier. In fact, on its low end, the flugelhorn sounds like another brass instrument that looks distinctly different from the ones we've looked at so far. This is the French horn. It's a very different looking instrument, and adding to that difference is the way it's played, with the player putting their hand inside the bell to adjust the pitch. The French horn is often associated with hunting, since it was developed from a hunting horn. Let's listen to it. I think the French horn takes mellow to a whole new level. It's a very difficult instrument to play in tune, but the hard work is totally worth it. Another low brass instrument that has a very distinctive look is the trombone. Do you notice something missing? Yes, it doesn't have any valves. Instead, it uses a slide. Let's listen to it. think the trombone compares to the French horn. It definitely plays lower, and it has a bit more edge to it. From the trombone, we're going to change shape again and go to the baritone horn. You might look at it and guess that it's actually a tuba, which is an easy mistake to make. Take a look at the tuba, and you can see how everything is wider and bigger with the tuba. Let's listen to the baritone horn first, and then compare it to the tuba to see how these changes affect the sound. With the baritone horn, we definitely have more of the warm and fuzzy sound we were beginning to hear in the French horn. Let's compare it to the tuba and see what happens in the larger instrument. Thank you. 
Wow, that takes low notes to a whole new level of lowness. It almost seems to growl on those low notes, and it loses just a bit of that mellow quality. I like these two examples because the baritone is actually showing off its higher range, even though it's actually a really low brass instrument. And then it's contrasted by the extremely low tuba. It's wonderful to hear them playing solo pieces since you can hear how well they can sing a melody. So, after you've listened to all of these music selections, do you think any of the brass instruments aren't high or low enough? Well, there are often several different sizes to choose from. Smaller ones that go higher and larger ones that go lower. Take a look at some of these pictures. I love that wee little horn up there next to the bigger horn. And smaller version of the French horn, different sizes of the trombones. It's pretty cool. Some of these instruments are so small they nearly fit into the palm of your hand. And others are so big that you can't hold them up. Now, as we listen to each of the instruments that we've gone over, it can kind of be easy to get it all jumbled up. So let's listen to an even shorter clip from each one, one after the other, with no interruptions, and see if we can hear the differences. As you listen to each of these instruments from high to low, you can hear the subtle change from one to the next. And of course, if you skip from, say, the piccolo trumpet to the tuba, there's going to be a much bigger change. When you put all of these brass instruments together, you have a wide variety of sound possibilities, which means composers can get exactly the kind of sound that they want. Well, that's it until we start on the percussion section. Be sure to check out the listening list and the links I've attached to do some further listening before you go on to learning about the percussion section. <laughs> 